How to Perform a Basic Clinical Swallow Evaluation by Sonia, Julie, Jessica, and Amber. The clinical evaluation of swallowing is an important tool that provides clinicians with information useful for diagnosing and treating swallowing disorders. The exam can help determine the cause of swallowing problem through the collection of case history, providing a base for swallowing treatment plans, as well as determining if additional instrumental examination need to be performed. The steps in a clinical evaluation of swallowing include collecting medical and case history, completing an oral mechanisms exam, and administering swallowing trial. Medical history will help the clinician determine the potential presence and cause of swallowing issues, including stroke, trauma, surgery, cancer, or other conditions that might cause dysphagia. During the physical examination, the clinician assesses the patient's level of awareness to determine if swallowing trials can be administered. If the patient is capable of continuing, an exam of the oral structures and muscles related to swallowing is completed. This includes the symmetry, strength, sensation, and coordination of the lips, jaw, and tongue. The tongue is also examined for any signs of neural damage evidenced by tremor, fasciculations, or atrophy. The oral cavity is examined for any lesions, and the velum is observed. Phonation and respiration are also evaluated. Any numbness or tingling should be recorded, and the patient is asked to cough to assess possible apraxia and determine if the client can voluntarily cough during the swallow trials for protecting and clearing the airway. Once the physical exam has been completed and the patient is fit to continue, the swallowing trials are administered. These include dry swallow or saliva swallow, ice chips, liquids thin to thick, and various consistencies of solids including pudding applesauce, soft chewables, and hard chewables. To begin, you will want to have cups, gloves, straws, spoons, paper towel, water, pudding, thickener, and ice chips. The following is a list of things to look for during a clinical swallow evaluation. First, you will be looking at pre-feeding skills, which include opening and closing the mouth, putting a spoon or cup to the mouth, or sucking from a straw. Difficulties in this area could indicate coordination difficulties or apraxia. Next, you will look at their oral skills, including lip closure, bolus prep and transfer, and clearing. Clinicians should watch for anterior spillage and oral pocketing. Once you've assessed their oral skills, you will evaluate the client's swallow initiation timing. Late initiation could cause premature spillage. Next, you will assess the client's hyolaryngeal elevation and excursion. Insufficient elevation and excursion could be caused by incomplete epiglottic inversion, which could result in pharyngeal residue or aspiration. Lastly, you will observe the number of swallows per bolus. Liquids, one swallow. Soft, moist foods, one to two swallows. Dry, thick foods, one to three swallows. Throughout the evaluation, the clinician should look for signs and symptoms of penetration or aspiration. Following the evaluation, a clinician determines the most appropriate diet and the need for an instrumental exam, such as an MBS or fees. While conducting your clinical swallow evaluation, you want to watch for signs and symptoms of aspiration. These include coughing, chronic throat clearing, watery eyes, facial grimace, multiple swallows, fever spikes, or respiratory changes. Bedside swallow evaluations cannot confirm all instances of penetration or aspiration and cannot detect silent aspiration. Additionally, the internal structures and their function cannot be definitively assessed in this method. This leads to difficulty prescribing specific treatments as well. Finally, 
the pharyngeal swallowing stage cannot be seen or clearly assessed without an instrumental measure. If symptoms of dysphagia are present, an instrumental examination like the MBS or the FEES is recommended. If there are unanswered questions about the patient's swallowing ability or physical indicators of swallowing difficulty like weight loss, fever spikes, or respiration issues, an instrumental exam is recommended. Additionally, if the patient performed poorly on the swallow trials, for instance, had signs and symptoms of aspiration, further studies are warranted. Instrumental exams can also confirm dysphagia symptoms observed during the bedside swallow exam and assess additional symptoms that have gone undetected. An MBS or FEES also has the ability to pinpoint the underlying medical factors causing swallowing difficulties which provides needed information for determining swallow treatment. Additional factors that could lead to the administration of an instrumental exam include a medical history that indicates a high risk of dysphagia, changes in swallowing over time, and the inability to perform a clinical swallowing evaluation due to alertness or other factors. The following table indicates which instrumental exam would work best when looking for specific swallowing functions.